My name is Camilla Maria Alman and uh, this is my story how I became a disciple of Jesus Christ. I was born in a family with a, a, a father uh, that, that was uh, an alcoholic and it was like uh, a traumatic uh, childhood uh, in that way that uh, it was like you had, had a monster in the house and nobody should know it. <laughs> People react differently and for me I, I took everything inside. We um, were three um, sisters and we, we reacted very differently, but we had a very bad uh, uh, childhood. But also good in many ways, of course. In Sweden we had some neighbors uh, and uh, they went to something that was called uh, Sunday school. And so my mother tells me that I come home and I say that like this. I want to go to Sunday school. What? Why? No, because uh, the other girls, they're going to Sunday school. I didn't know what it was. Okay, you can go. So because of that, uh, we went, me and my two sisters went to uh, Sunday school for like six years or something like that. They told us that uh, like, like Bible stories, like they were fairy tales. But anyhow, they told about God. Uh, so I came home and I asked my mother, um, does God exist? Do you believe in God? And she said, I don't believe in God, uh, but you can decide for yourself. So I came to God and I said, okay, God, if you make me fly like a bird, I will believe in you. And uh, he didn't. So I didn't believe in him. And then the, the, the time passed on and I got worse and worse inside of me. Uh, more and more darkness came into me. Like when I was 14 years old and people are going to be confirmed because this is like a very, very uh, strong tradition in Sweden. It was. It's not as much now. Anyhow, so I said, of course I'm not going to be confirmed. <laughs> I don't believe in God and I'm very much black, white. And uh, my father said, my father, my mother, atheist. My father says, you have to go. And I was like, what? So I went there. But because of that, uh, we were reading the Bible. I was sitting there and I was feeling like, Something, something is there. So I left that. And after that, these years after that was very tough. My father was very good in this, like you cannot drink, you cannot smoke, you cannot have, have sex, you cannot do anything. He was doing bad things himself, saying something, doing something else, but we were listening to him. What I started to do was write poetry. Uh, so I was writing very dark poetry, uh, but I love words. Uh, so this was something that made me cope with life. But then in university, a lot of alcohol came into the picture, parties and, and, and guys. I started to feel more and more dark and more and more like if somebody would see me, they would see a witch. After a while, I felt like there's no meaning. Why should I live? So, uh, I wanted to kill myself. Now I don't understand that, but I wanted to kill myself. I didn't get so far so at really thinking how to do it, but I was thinking, I'm, now I'm going to live on the edge. So I started to live on the edge. That means that I do stupid things, really stupid things that something bad really can happen to me. And you know how much bad things happen to me? No bad things happen. I did so much stupid things that I could have had what kind of disease and what kind of uh, stupid accident or, or like somebody would have killed me or raped me or whatever. Nothing bad happened to me. The only thing was that I felt more and more bad inside. The turning point was that my father, that never admitted he was an alcoholic, never. Uh, something bad happened in his life. He was caught. Um, uh, driving uh, uh, when he was not sober. It was when he was like 50, something like that. Uh, and, uh, and then he went to something that was called like AA. And then it was family week there. So I was thinking, okay, I come. Only they don't speak about God. Of course. The first they see, said was like, there is a God. But then they said, you can decide yourself. So uh, I started to go to this 
uh, adult children alcoholics groups and uh, I started to read all about it because I'm very much <laughs> black and white as I said. But what happened with my father when he took this decision is that I thought that there was nothing good in life, I thought there was no light, there was no love, there was nothing and everybody that said that was hypocrites because I saw the other side, I saw the darkness, I even saw demons before I was a believer. Maybe there is goodness, maybe there is meaning, I'm going to search for this now. So during this year, from I was 24 to 25, I started to search for truth. I was going to read uh, Bhagavad Gita, I was going to read about the Taoism, I was going to meditate, uh, nothing ever happened but that. I just started, it was like, it was like I was, <laughs> I was protected, I don't know. Uh, the only thing that happened was my boss, he told me, read the Bible too. So I was going to meditate and then suddenly this happens. A voice comes and says to me, Camilla, I am love, I am the light, I am the good power in life. If you take a hold of me as you have taken hold of the dark power, I will be with you as it has been with you. And I was like, Oi, God exists. I was not a believer of God. I did not know there was a God. There was nothing out there. And then suddenly I'm sitting there and I... Sorry, sorry. I understand that there is a God. There is a God. I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? So I'm calling Swedish State Church. They said I could speak to somebody that was called Carl Erik Salberg, uh, a, a, a priest. So I got there. And you know this Carl Erik Salberg, he has been a missionary in Africa. He has been so used by God. So one of the priests in the Swedish State Church that are really a believer, I got a hold of. <laughs> I look at this man, he's like so weak in himself. So it's like, I think he will fall whenever. So it's nothing about himself, nothing. Okay, tell me, he says. I cannot tell you. I have uh, heard so many bad things. You can tell me anything. I cannot tell you. Finally, I do. You know what I'm telling him? God exists. I didn't believe in him. My whole life. So this is when you understand that you're a sinner. When he takes my hand, this feeble man with no power, no, nothing to look at, you know, the power of God hits me. So I get so filled with the power of God and I'm like crying and crying and crying for like hours when I'm walking home. I knew something happened. So my boss and me, uh, we were always, almost always going out for lunch together. Uh, but he not, didn't really say so much. So uh, I'm going, uh, leaving early for, from work. And I had read this book, the Bible, that he gave me uh, some months before. And I really didn't want to do it. And I was trying to give him back the Bible before I left. Then he spoke up. Camilla, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth and I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. And I was like so angry with him and I don't take back my Bible. <laughs> and suddenly I was going to my home but suddenly I found myself in the church. And it was open in the day, it's not always open. I went in and I went into a pew. I was almost the only person there. My hands goes up like this. My mouth says this, thank you Jesus that you are alive. We went out Monday to Thursday uh, to, to lunch together and I could not go to lunch because I had a deadline. So I, I need to go and have food. So I took this 18 floors uh, elevated down, turned to the corner, but when I'm turning like this, they say, my feet. It was like I was glued. I could not move. God knew exactly how to get me. 
God puts a guide is called uh, Lillebror Fredriksson. First time I ever admitted, I looked at everybody. Even not everybody was smiling, I saw it. They have something I don't have. They have something in their eyes I don't have. And then suddenly he's saying, you there, are you safe? You come to church, somebody will ask, is there somebody here that want to get saved? Nobody had to ask me to come there. I just went there. Me and another guy, we go forward and we pray the prayer uh, that we, we repent and we start to believe in Jesus and, and ask for forgiveness and then something beautiful happened there. This witch inside, this darkness, this hidden darkness. When Jesus came into my life, this light came in like this. And all darkness went away. And I was filled with joy. I was filled with light. It was like, <laughs> uh, it was like I, I was in love with somebody like for three months or something. When you are like crazy in love. This is, was my first month with, with Jesus. And then we went down to the basement and somebody said, Welcome to the kingdom of God. When, welcome to the family of God. So this is what I usually greet people that come to the Lord. It wasn't until like about three months later that, that I got the first like uh, test. <laughs> and uh, I was starting to feel like, what is this? Is this true? Does God exist? Uh, and, uh, and I remember that I felt like, who is this people like this? <laughs> and then I was, uh, somebody asked me, how do you feel Camilla? Uh, and then I was talking to him, he was called Eric, and uh, then he told me, Camilla, don't you know the first thing the devil said? Yeah, so I was like, oh, that, that is like a, it's like a, a test. I, I asked God when I was a little that I would fly. What happened was that the first um, week when I was uh, uh, saved, I got a, like a tape. Uh, it was Peter Jangren that was preaching a message about a bird in a cage. You think that this is life. Some people know that this is not life. There is something more because you know, a bird in cage, but it is opened. The bird doesn't understand it's open. So he was telling that one day the bird saw it, that it's a hole you can fly. And then you fly and then you're free. And for me, it was like a gift from God since I asked him that I, if I would fly, I will believe in you. And then the first sermon I'm hearing is about a bird that starts flying. <laughs> so for me, that was like, wow, God is good. He remembered when I was a small kid asking. And I met uh, my, my first husband. And uh, he was a guy from Sri Lanka. And he was, of course, a believer in Jesus Christ. And we had this together. But what I'm going to say is that uh, he died. So um, um, we did never think about that as an option. So we never spoke about he going to die of, of the cancer. We only spoke about he getting healed. So I did not, I, I didn't know that this can happen, uh, but it did. And the beautiful thing about this is that uh, we did spoke one one time about if uh, if somebody of us dies. Uh, so can I marry again? So uh, he said yes, and I said no. <laughs> so he died and I was devastated. But you know, my faith in God, that is a gift, not about my, me, but it kept me. Suddenly God put friends in my life. In the, this, I just knew I will meet another man. And I was like, what? I'm going to meet another man. We were so happy. Why would I want to meet another? It was for eternity. But the Bible says, unto death do your part. I will not have a new man if it's not a man that really goes out with the gospel. What did I get? Uh, I met Peter uh, later and, um, uh, and we, we got married. When I got saved, I stopped writing. I was writing because I was feeling bad. Since I was saved, I'm feeling good. Why should I write? Uh, so, but then I was thinking, 
maybe God wants to use this. So I was prayer working and I was saying to God, okay, if you want to use this, I'm ready. Nothing happened. So some years later, and I don't know exactly how many years, maybe two years later or something, I was also walking in a prayer walk. The first poem landed. And I started to write again. But now, inspired by God. So God made something about that too. So something, there are things when you're not a believer that this is really from God. But when you come into the life uh, with Jesus, then it comes out as to be. The big thing for me is, yes, I was darkness and now I'm light. Everybody that is not a believer is darkness. And everybody that is a believer is light. I never thought I would have anything better. But you know, God is good. A God that makes even things better. He takes us from glory to glory. And even if I was so happy in my first marriage, I am more happy now. I'm more happy now. God is so good. He's so good. So Peter and me, in the beginning, it wasn't that, that it was obvious that he was the man that wanted to go out with the gospel in that way that we are doing now. I wanted to serve the Lord full time. I would refuse to have any work and nothing. Uh, it wasn't like it was a work for me to do full time. It was not time. Something can be not time. It can be God, but not the time. And when the pa years passed, I still had the longing to be full-time for the Lord, uh, but also knew that I should be in the business world. So I'm a, um, uh, I have like a, a bachelor in business administ administration economics, and God ma made, after a while I understood that I should do good. I didn't only take bad jobs, I took good jobs. So in the end of my career, I never wanted to do one, I really had a very good job with a very good salary and everything. But anyhow, I knew I should do both. I should be in the business world and I should be serving the Lord. So I usually preached in churches where I was and I was like doing different kinds of ministry work. So I always knew I would do both until the time that God would point out. He got a bit in a crisis and because he was reading the Bible and miracles, wonders, people coming to the Lord and things like that. And he look in his life. <laughs> uh, but he said, is this the truth? I was like, <laughs> uh, we are different kind of personalities. Uh, but I said, but what do you mean? I don't see anybody getting um, coming to the Lord. Uh, I don't see anybody starting speaking tongues. I don't see um, uh, people getting healed. But I do, I said. I put my hands to people, they get healed. I lead people to the Lord. I said, what? Yes, I do, but that was like 23 years ago. I also got a crisis. <laughs> so we got a crisis. And, uh, but then Peter got a hold of this, um, what God is doing uh, in these uh, last times, the last reformation that God is doing. Uh, and uh, he got a hold of this that, yes, you can be used. We can make disciples. You show somebody how to do it. So somebody uh, in Denmark showed him how to do it, how to heal the sick. And then after this, he showed me. And after this, we have started to show others. He started to make films. He started to put them out on YouTube, healing videos. But we want to do this in this way, that we are like living our lives with a job, normal life. But we are still believers in Jesus Christ 24-7. And we're still able to make disciples and, and live this kind of life. But we couldn't do it after a while. He couldn't do it because it was too much. As a couple, you need to be together. You cannot be apart. I know so many preachers, when in the beginning uh, I was uh, saved, uh, so many preachers that were divorced uh, because they were going all around the world, but their, their wives and kids were staying at home. We are not doing that. We are going to be together. Uh, uh, even if it's hard to be, even if you're together sometimes, if you're working all the time. So please out there, prioritize God your relationship with God, and then together with your husband and wife and family, and then what you are doing, either job or ministry. But we are uh, disciples 24-7. After three years, we were in Boston, and God called me.
I got this again. I, I was, we were praying they were sending us back to Sweden or something. I don't remember exactly. But then this came to me. It's time now. I must be there. I must be there with him. So now we're doing this together. I want a man that really wants to go out with the gospel. He is the great evangelist. Uh, and uh, I think he's more than an evangelist. Of course, God has sent us out in an apostolic uh, ministry too, but he is the evangelist when it comes to him, me and him. But I'm learning and I have the, I have the heart for the lost ones, but I have also the heart for, for the church. And the big thing in all this for me is, I did not know there is a God. I didn't know there is a good God. And He has always been there. And I believe in Him. I received Him. I was lost. I was blind. But now, now I see. And I'm found. And I remember this song, Amazing Grace. This is the best song for me, Amazing Grace. I was mocking Christians. I was mocking God. There is a God. And this is big. If you don't know him, find him.